They, okay, so you're saying some people listen to some some du'at, some speakers, and these speakers are not upon guidance. Or they're not upon the methodology of the Prophet and the Sahaba and the people say, take the good and and leave the bad. So the first question I would ask is, do you know the good? Do you know the bad? That's the first question I'm gonna ask. The reality is you don't. You won't study the aqidah and you don't know the intricacies of the sunnah. And you don't know the tricks and treachery of the people of Bid'ah. How are you going to be able to hash through and filter through what is good and what is bad? Matter of fact, sometimes you may even know the sunnah. And you may even know the bad. Yet it still affects your heart. I'll give you an example. The teacher of Imam Ahmed was a man called Sheikh Abdul Razak al Sanani, one of the teachers, Sheikh Abdul Razak al Sanani. This Imam was a mountain from the Salaf al Salih. And his teachers were all giants from the Salaf. But one day, some of the beliefs of the Shia entered inside of him. Tashayyur entered inside of him. Rahimahullah. He didn't become a Shia, but he got affected by some of the beliefs. So when he got affected by the belief, they asked him, they said, Ya Imam Abdul Razak, what's going on? Like you're like the teacher of Imam Ahmed, and your teachers are the Imams from the Salaf of Salihin. How do you all people get affected by some of the beliefs of the Shia? And he said, there was one Sheikh from amongst the Shia. He said, I, will, I used to love his manners. So I used to sit in his gatherings and I used to listen to him. And some of the tashayyur entered inside of me. You see. Now the Shia at the time, by the way, remember, they, over the years they matured, they became evil. They, they, these were the lesser Shias, the ones who were closer to the Sunnah. But I'm saying even amongst the lesser Shias, you know, it got affected. Imagine today. So sitting around people who are mis- people of misguidance, well, like brothers, sisters, it's dangerous. You, 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 you don't know. Like, you know, the poet said, he said, I learned the evil, not because I wanted the evil, like in Litabaki, but because I wanted to shield myself from the evil. He said, the one who does not learn the difference between the good and the evil, yaqafi, he's going to fall into the evil. You see? So you're sitting there listening to this guy thinking, you know the diff- you're going to take the good from the bad, but wallah, you don't know. And don't present your heart to that kind of fitna. Do you see? But with that said, you also have to realize, and this is a sad reality that I've re- realized more so recently, is that we also need to provide alternatives for the youth, which sadly, we don't really have so many of at this time. So which one of you is going to stand up and take this matter seriously? Become a student of knowledge. I'm going to learn the Arabic language and learn the sciences of the religion. And be a person that could benefit people. I would advise you to take this matter very seriously, my young brothers and sisters. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said something amazing. He advised his students, he said, take knowledge from the people of knowledge before they disappear. Because the time may come when people are in need of your knowledge. And you have to understand the context with which he's speaking. He lost the most knowledgeable man, which was the Prophet ﷺ. And when the Prophet ﷺ died, people would go to who? Abu Bakr and Umar. But then Abu Bakr and Umar died. But Abu Bakr and Umar died. Ibn Mas'ud now, he finds that now people are coming to him. So he realized that, that he is living in a time where his knowledge, people need it now. You know? So seek knowledge now, brothers and sisters. To learn the basics of your religion, go to muslimsurvivalguide.com.